Okay, everybody, we're back. Brand new take aim. And this week I have Dylan Dawson on from OnX Hunt Map. We basically go over some of the new stuff that's come out with OnX since last year and some of just tutorial wise how to use some of the features that already exist. And I'll be the first to say this is one of the tools I use every day. I'm constantly looking at some of my hunting properties and I just can't even speak enough about Onyx and the stuff they do. It is such a great app, such a great tool if you hunt. Uh, highly recommend it. So hope you guys enjoy the episode. All right, guys, we're back. Brand new Take Aim podcast, and uh, excited to have this guy back on the show, Dylan Dawson from Onyx Hunt Maps. What's happening, Dylan? Yeah, thanks. Uh, first and foremost, thanks for having me back on. Um, yeah, it's, it's going good. Season's right around the corner here in Montana. Uh, I've been shooting the bow a bunch and just itching to get out. And um, our archery antelope season actually just started, so got the first hunt of the year under the belt. Wasn't successful, but uh, elk's right around the corner, so. Yeah, I couldn't be more excited for the season. Heck yeah. What is, uh, what's your guys' weather like for the opening of antelope? Is it like hot or, um, you know, or are you guys kind of in fall it, western mode? You know, we're, we're kind of in that weird in-between phase right now. Um, you know, I think yesterday we hit up 80, 82 degrees, so definitely pretty warm. Um, we're pleasantly surprised. It's one of those things that it could be 95 degrees or it could be 45 degrees this time of the year. Um, in Montana, it seems like. So we actually had pretty good weather for that one. We were just uh, camping out under the stars, and a couple of the nights it dipped down into the 40s and got a little chilly, but then it was mid to high 70s during the day. So sure beat the uh, potential 90, 95 degree heat. Yeah, heck yeah. That, I don't know what it is, and I know you guys have to deal with it a lot, but, um, you know, just that heat, I have a hard time, like just the heat alone doesn't, ever make me feel like it's hunting season you know what I mean yeah no it is it seems like and it actually happened I think a couple of weeks ago for the first time um once you get that super super cool morning and you know some some dew on the ground you know not frost yet by any means but uh just a super cool morning when you step out it's like okay it's it's time it's September yeah. uh, it's time. but yeah it's, uh, I feel the same way you know those hot days it just doesn't really feel like it's go time yet but once you get that first one it's uh starts to get the uh blood pumping yeah heck yeah i know that uh i always just like kind of in awe when i see a lot of the western guys mule deer hunting especially this time of year or some of the videos i watch and i know though like, those guys will mention it's 98 or it's 95 i'm like oh my gosh man that's such a different world like we don't even get excited <laughs> here unless it's we wake up and it's 50 something in the morning you know, in August, you're like, oh my God, hunting season's around the corner. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Like you said, I've been seeing some guys um, being successful already on mule deer hunts and whatnot. And um, our our season doesn't start this year until September 7th, so it's about a week later than usual. Um, but with the the archery antelope, archery only antelope in Montana, you have like the luxury of starting a couple weeks early. Um, but yeah, we're still a few weeks out from deer and elk and Primarily for me, I'm, I'm mostly hunting Montana. Um, you know, I apply for some points out of state and whatnot, but uh, mostly Montana for now. Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. So, uh, antelope-wise, did you guys end up even seeing any goats anywhere? Oh, yeah. We saw, saw plenty of antelope, uh, got on some pretty good stocks, a couple that should have worked out. It's just, you know, what we're running into, and it's the same, same thing I've always ran, in, ran into is, you know, you can do the stock, get up in range, but trying to get a range on an antelope in the prairie is really difficult when you're on your belly looking through cactus and sagebrush and little grass in front of you. So uh, we were able to let a couple arrows go, draw back on a few bucks and uh, take a couple shots. But unfortunately, without, you know, we we're kind of guesstimating range and a couple miss miss guesses there um, left the arrows a little bit short. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was good. We got close. There was plenty of people out taking – advantage of the early season opener yeah that's super cool though i'm not, i'm always jealous when you guys start because you get to start usually in a whole month and a half before we can usually start anything out here but most of ours is september 15th if we travel out of state to a place like missouri if not everything's everything around me neighboring statewide michigan included indiana it's, it's october 1st ohio october 1st so um 
Oh, it's okay. always a, it's always like you know bittersweet. You're, you're like jealous and happy for the guys out west hunting, but you're jealous at the same time, you know. <laughs> yep, understandable for sure. Excited to have you on, and I I think it's been exactly a year, somewhere within a week or two that uh, you were on last, and I know there's some updates to the Onyx hunt map, and just wanted to kind of go over and uh, cover some of the stuff we talked about last time, Dylan, and in whatever's new from last August to this August. And uh, just kind of give a refresher on like some of the layers and, and the map features itself. But let's just start at like the most simple level. I would like to talk to you just about like when you're reading the map level and you and you have um, let's see, correct me, whatever, Dylan. What's the name for like basically the private layer and the state government layer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The private and government lands. Um, you know, basically what it boils down to is private public. And usually, so just if anybody's new to Onyx Hunt Maps, the anything private is always in red, correct, Dylan? Yeah, so the private layer will show up, um, you know, it'll show those boundaries, and those boundaries will be in red. And then within that, that uh, parcel, if you will, um, we'll show the actual owner's name, um, whoever yep. owns that property, whether it be an LLC, a personal owner, um, you know, it'll show that information within it. And then the public layer um the government lands layer will basically we we aligned it with uh the color scheme of the old maps that everybody's familiar with so you know blue is going to show up as state on there um blm is going to show up as yellow uh you know national forest is going to come up as green and those will be labeled as well so that's i mean i would say a, a major percentage of why people end up getting on x is definitely for that private and public land uh boundary data you know they want to know where the public is where the the forest is for example how they can access it um know that they're going to be legal and then if they are hunting private or trying to obtain private permission you you have those landowner names and boundaries there so um definitely that's like the main main selling point main reason that people end up getting the app um, but from there as you know you know there's a ton of other different features and uses uses yeah for sure so I just want to touch back on that you said that anything that's government land shows up in green is that correct so the green would be like the national forest um, yeah, yeah. National and forest. then okay. like the BLM will show up as yellow uh, blue is going to be state etc Okay. So with that being said, so let's say I tap one and it comes up green. Does that automatically mean that I have permission to actually hunt it or how is there more in depth information after I tap on it? So tapping on it will highlight a parcel and then that's why that's going to turn green. So basically when you tap on any parcel, whether it be private or public, it will show up as green and then it's going to show you more information about the area you tap. So for example, it'll show you acreage size, um, what kind of land it is, BLM, state, et cetera. Um, the hunting district you're in, all sorts of other information there. Um, but as far as like the, you know, green, we'll, we'll go with the example of national forest showing as like a green overlay on the map. Um, you know, pr we don't say exactly like, yes, you can hunt here, no, you cannot. You know, national forest, anybody can go access it. You know, there might be a couple very specific finite limitations on some spots, um, but we show everybody, you know, where those state lands, where those forest BLM lands are that are public, and then from there on, you know, if there was certain limitations on, say, one particular piece of state land, you know, that is up to the user. But uh, for the most part, you know, you turn on those government land layers and anything that's showing there, um, you know, you have access to. Okay. And uh, one other question, just because I've seen this a few times, is what are the outlines that are just sometimes white? Like I've seen white ones that don't um, have like a border around them. And sometimes those are government land or townships or, you know, local government, I should say. But sometimes they're just white, not in red or not in green. And that's a boundary of, of a piece of Yeah, parcel? I'm sorry, a boundary of a partial. Yep. Gotcha. So, you know, sometimes um, – it could be a few different things is, is I guess, the best answer. Um, if you have, like, your township section range layer on, it could be showing that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the private lands are going to be uh, bordered with, with that reddish color there. And then a lot of times we use, like, a different color for, like, roads or 
like a, a game management unit boundary is going to show up as green. But yeah, without seeing specifically which one you're talking about there, it could be a few different things. Okay. Yeah, not a problem. I've just noticed I've I've seen it a few times, and I, I assume mm -hmm. I probably could enlarge it and figure it out. Or yes, actually, I'm wrong. Sometimes they do show up in red. So like this one is a township owned piece of ground, but it did end up mm -hmm. popping up red. But it from the overview if that makes sense. It just shows up yep. white. So, but okay, that makes a lot of sense. Gotcha. Yeah, it's probably just a design style. Yep. Okay. Totally get it. So, but yeah, I mean, layer wise, let's talk a little more about that, Dylan. You can do, I'm just looking at and talking briefly about Michigan, but I mean, like I, mm -hmm. I actually can pick out the states I hunt. So like this year I got Michigan, Indiana, Missouri, and I can see all those layers and all that communication that me and Dylan just talked about all is the same on each one of those, which is really neat. Um, yeah, definitely. And we do that because obviously, you know, it's just, nationwide product we do have every state so definitely want to keep those um consistent so you know if i happen to draw a colorado tag i've never been to colorado for example and i hit down there i'm already you know already familiar with what it's like in montana so it's basically the same in colorado exactly yep very cool so now as far as the options for the different layers i mean you guys are adding stuff it seems like all the time but what are the most popular ones dylan that guys just seem to grab it gravitate to yeah i mean as you said we're constantly updating adding new stuff um but the the ones that most people have on or really you know end up getting the app for like i said are that private and public lands layer so if you go into my layers um and then your state layers that's where you'll find those another big one is the the hunting district so um, here in Montana, you know, every state's different in this regard, but here in Montana, it can get very confusing as well as other states. Um, you know, we have different hunting game management units for deer and different ones for antelope and different ones for bighorn sheep and different, different ones for bear, moose, everything. So um, the uh, hunting districts layer is super beneficial. You can turn that on and then you can actually tap on the layer settings and change the sub layer. So, you know, like I said, I was out hunting antelope this past weekend. So I just uh, went to the sub layer, tapped on antelope, and boom, the antelope layers come right up. Um, antelope game management unit layers there. So that's a big one. Um, another one, um, and kind of another instance where state by state is slightly different. Montana, we call them block management. Essentially what that is, is it's a statewide program that's ran with the uh, fish and wildlife where it's private property, but they basically enroll in this opportunity that allows um, hunters and fishermen and the public to come use their private property for recreation. So um, I turn on that block management unit and all of a sudden I have access to a lot more ground. We used that a lot this past weekend as well, you know, just driving down the road, spot a herd of antelope and look and it's in that block management. So basically you just go either sign in or go get permission from the landowner and then you're, you're good to go there. So that opens up a lot of uh, opportunities. You know, some of the hunt layers, um, and I'm sure we've talked about this briefly last year, but the roadless area layer, um, you know, we've got a QDMA CWD layer, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation layer where they show their access projects, um, NWTF layer where they uh, show their turkey records data, you know, Current wildfires is a big one out here in Montana. So, um, you know, this is typically fire season. It's fire season for us about this time of the year. Uh, we're super fortunate this year, and we don't have a ton of fires going on. But if I turn on that current wildfires layer, um, that's updated daily, and it will show you, um, you know, where those fires are, how big they are, how many acres that fire is, and et cetera. So a lot of times out here, I've got that one turned on this time of the year, and then the other big ones are definitely our trail data. So we have all the trails, trail mileages, and we also have a trail slope uh, layer. So if you turn that on, it'll not only show you where the trails are, the trail heads, um, but that trail slope will grade it based on difficulty. So if it's a green area of a trail that's you know more than likely pretty flat um, to red area of a trail, you're going to be climbing, and it's uh, kind of a harder version there. So. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a few. Each state has its own, so I'm kind of just going through Montana layers since that's where I'm at right now. But, uh, yeah, lots lots of different options and the ability to customize. Now, 
On di different states, Dylan, do they have a different amount of layers? Does that make sense? Um, yeah, some states might have more or less depending upon the data. Um, so, for example, you know that block management is one for Montana. Okay. Um, if there's a state that doesn't have a program like that, it just wouldn't have that option. Um, okay. But more or less, they're you know they're pretty uh, all pretty similar. Okay. So you just want to pay a little bit of attention because even if you usually pick four or five, six layers, a different state may have one like you just said where you get public access on private ground or something like that. You just want to pay a little more attention to it because you definitely would want that, I would assume. I would anyways. Yeah, absolutely. But like on mine, I have Michigan government lands, Michigan private lands, Michigan hunt management areas, Michigan possible access, and forest, uh, forest programs. So, oh, and the access program that's already enrolled in basically hunter access. It's, we do call it HAP out here, which it's kind of like you said, you can pull up. Usually there's designated, sometimes parking areas, there might be a box and you need to sign in and sign out when you're, you're done. Um, yeah. so lots of those land, personally, I think it's great stuff because a lot of the guys don't know, know about it and it's free access and it's very minimal hunting pressure lots of times, especially out here where the hunting pressure is absurd. You can find some really sweet little hunter access program habitat that's just killer sometimes. Yeah, same here in Montana. It opens up a, a lot of a lot of opportunity, and, you know, I've been fortunate in it enough, as well as a lot of other people that I've hunted with, you know, to be successful on that program, you know, on private land that they do allow hunting. So opens up a ton of land. Yeah, for sure. Very cool, though. Um, I can't believe how much it probably interferes with my life sometimes, Dylan, how much I'm on this app. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've, we've heard that a few times for sure. Uh, but so yeah. since last year, I assume you guys have updated some features. You want to go ahead and we'll talk about that, Dylan. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, we touched on the layers. Um, another big one is our offline maps. So for anybody who didn't hear last year or is just getting introduced to the app for the first time, um, you know, you can use it without cell service. That's one of the things that we built into it is all you have to do is save the area that you're headed to prior to going out there, and then you're good to go. Um, you know, it'll still show your GPS location. It'll still show all the layers, everything. So um, all you have to do there is tap the off-grid, save new map. You have a few different options on how to save a map there, what sizes. But once you save those, um, you know, you'll be good to go without cell service. So one of the things that we've done in this past year is we've really improved on that uh, process. Um, with that being said, I would encourage everybody to resave their maps just because it's a lot better experience now. And one of the older things about a year ago is when you would save a map, you would have to turn on all the layers that you wanted offline. So, for example, if I forgot to turn on the private parcels layer, when I save that and go out into the field where I don't have service, that private parcel layer is not accessible. Um, now that's changed, so if you save a map, it will save all the layers that um, you know you have there that are savable. So you're good to go there. And then, too, it's just a good idea to resave maps about once a year before you go out in the, into the field because, um, you know, there's always changing landowner information, always um, changing boundary lines, et cetera. So you always want to make sure you have the most up-to-date maps offline. Um, so that's another uh, a pretty big feature that we have improved on. You know, the, the file sizes are a lot lower, a lot quicker to save, so just a lot of improvements there. Um, so and then another area, yeah. Dylan, um, while we're talking yeah. about this, so if I go to off-grid, I click save new, new map. So is that, that's actually saving like the piece of property that I'm hunting on is that's what you're saying? Yeah, so I mean, you can, uh, what you want to do is you'll want to find the area that you're going to. So you can pan around the map, zoom in, say you zoom in on the piece of property that you're going to be hunting, then you want to tap that off grid, save new map. Um, okay. And make sure that the area that you're going out to without cell service is within that map that you're saving. Okay, gotcha. So if it's a big piece, you still want to zoom in though, is what you're saying. Yeah, yep, okay. definitely. That's, so That's what I meant earlier options. by that. Okay. Yeah, there's different options. So we've got a 5-mile wide map, a 10-mile wide map, and 150-mile. So if you save that 150-mile wide map, obviously you're going to get a 
ton of area. Sure. Um, okay. What I do is I save 150 mile, and honestly, I have the entire state of Montana saved in 150 mile maps. Um, the reason being, if I end up going to an area where I didn't plan on going, um, or if I'm just driving through the state and I want to check something out, I at least have a map. Um, with that 150 mile map, though, you can't zoom in and get super crisp, clean aerial imagery. Um, you know, you might not be able to zoom in and like see a crick's name, for example, that kind of data. But it will get you the private, public, all the road systems that you can still navigate around, no if you're on private or public. Um, so what I do, like I said, is I save a 150 mile map, then I go ahead and find the areas that I'm going to be hunting in specifically, and I'll go in and save a bunch of like 10 mile wide maps. Um, that will allow me to, when I'm in that area, I'll be able to zoom in, see that nice detailed imagery, um, get all the See that creek name? Details. Okay. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you can say multiple maps. I've got probably way too many on my phone right now. Um, I don't even know how many I have, but as long as you have um, storage space in your phone for those maps, you can go ahead and just save as many as you want. Okay. And where where exactly does it save? Does it save it on the on, X, on the off grid portion of the app, or is it actually downloads it right your like your photos somewhere or files? Nope. So um, all you'd have to do then is once you get out there without cell service, you would tap off grid tap go offline, and then all those same maps are going to populate. Um, you okay. can also just put your phone into airplane mode out there too, um, which is a good idea anyways. It saves a lot of battery. Um, but then it will automatically pull those same maps. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, that that is a really sweet feature. Uh, I was, when I asked earlier, I was thinking about 1,000 acres. You, you just mentioned 150 miles. <laughs> totally funny. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy, yeah. but that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, we, we're we out here in Montana. I pretty much know where that I hunt as self-service, so uh, without that, it would be unusable. Um, but, yeah, so that's the uh, offline maps. Another area of improvement that we are currently still working on, but we've made quite a bit of improvement in the, the past year, is the map tools. So the map tools basically allow you to mark waypoints, um, you know, mark your current location, uh, draw an area around something and show acreage, line distance, et cetera. Um, so now when I go to add a waypoint, I can choose between a ton of, uh, so we had basically different icons, um, select icons, elk, deer, bedding, scrape, et cetera. Um, we've added a ton of icons there based on user feedback and what people wanted to see in there. And then we also added the ability to change the color. So you know, if you want, if it's a water icon and you're just showing areas where there's good water source, you can change it to blue. Um, I think how I'm probably going to set mine up this year is, you know, all my elk waypoints might be one color, my deer waypoints might be another, um, and so on and so forth. What I'm finding is, like, I have a ton of waypoints and they're all, you know, red and similar. And when I zoom into an area that I both elk and deer hunt, for example, it's hard to distinguish you know, which one was in which season and, and exactly there. So lots of different ways you can do it, but you can color customize. Um, and then also you can share waypoints. So that was available last year. Um, you can tap on a waypoint, click share. I could text you a waypoint, and then it automatically just goes to your app. Um, so that's great for meeting up, you know, hey, let's meet here in the morning type thing, um, or just, letting your loved ones know where you're going to be at, you know, texting um, a family member, you know, I'll be in this general area, that kind of stuff. So uh, we've made a lot of improvements there. Now when you text or share a waypoint, that color and the notes and the waypoint name and everything will transfer over with it. So that's something that we actually just released, and we're going to be continuing to improve on there. Man, it, it is like, <clears throat> excuse me, really improved from last year. Uh, you guys have done a great job when I can't believe how many options there are still in like, I mean, you can, you guys literally have one that says ladder stand or meet like, so the yep. options are endless and you can save those and text those and uh, what a great way to communicate. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, as I said there, we have a lot of different icons, um, but we're constantly getting feedback from our customers, which is excellent, you know, through our customer service channels or through social media. 
Um, we had a lot of guys saying that, for example, like, oh, it'd be great if you had a ladder stand or it'd be great if you had, um, you know, bedding area or what, what have you there. So basically we, we sent out a couple surveys to our customers, got a lot of feedback, and uh, put in, like, the most commonly asked ones there. So um, that was a good example of, you know, the customers basically pushed that through. <laughs> Yeah, it, it. I mean, it's great. That's that's such a neat thing. I, I mean, there's been several times where we've actually, me and you were just talking about new piece that I'm going to be hunting, and you know, we're drawing and editing photos, and it looks like, you know, literally kindergarten chicken scratch. You know what I mean? So that's a yeah. huge improvement to be able to communicate and get on the same game plan uh, when you're hunting a new piece of ground or public ground or any ground for that matter. That's really awesome, awesome feature. I love it. Yep, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, lots of improvements there. We're, we're still working on a few things that I'm excited to get released here soon. Um, you know, tracking, not a whole lot's uh, been updated with tracking. You know, we're, we're constantly working on it, making the feature just uh, better. But, you know, to use the tracker, you just start as you're hiking around. It'll show you uh, exactly where you've been. You know, when you save that track, it'll show you, how long you've walked, um, how much time it was, et cetera. And then you can also customize like the color and um, line type, et cetera there. So. Yeah, that's a really cool feature. And I mean, it literally tracks your footsteps everywhere you go. And we've used it a lot like shed hunting in the off season and uh, stuff like that. And it, it's like really a cool feature when you're kind of, uh, like I said, going bedding to a bedding area or just walking to your trails and, and you can kind of get a very big overview of those trails embedding areas in some of these spots and it's uh probably one of my favorite features on the map i like it a lot yeah for sure and you know whether you're just trying to find a good play or a good route into your stand that you can follow in the dark um you know use it a lot for blood tracking too so you know exactly where you've been like you said shed hunting um lots of different uses there and kind of just a safety feature too you know there's some areas out here where it's really cliffy country and, uh, you know, you hike into an area in the daylight and then come out in the dark. And it's really nice to have a track or a point of reference there on the app to know you're not going to get cliffed out or in a bad spot. So lots of different uses there. Um, one other thing, too, that we've uh, recently added and improved on a ton is the wind and weather features in the app. So um, now in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a little weather icon. If you tap that, it'll change from wind speed and direction um, just general temperature, um, and then if you tap on an actual like weather station, it'll show up a you know weather. It'll show precipitation, wind and uh, wind speed direction, barometer, sun sunrise, sunset, etc. And then if you pull that up, it will actually give you an extended like week long forecast. Um, a lot of the things. You know, a lot of the times myself and everybody here would be in the app, and then we'd have to go out and then go into a different weather app or somewhere else to find out what the weather forecast was going to be like for tomorrow. Um, and then we just figured might as well put it in the app and, and let people check it out there. Yeah, that's a really cool feature. Actually, I'd, I'm kind of behind the times. I didn't even know you could tap on it and change all that stuff I'm doing it right now, which is really cool and trying to figure out some of those stuff. That's pretty neat. Yeah. But that's super simple. It's just the, the bottom icon right above the tracker on the right bottom side. Yep. And so if you tap it um, and then if you zoom out, you'll see the different weather stations that we pull that data from. And then if you actually tap on one of those weather stations and you can check whether, you know, on the other side of the, the country, if you tap on that weather station on the bottom is where, more information will come up, and then if you just put, hold your finger on that and then drag it up, that's where you'll get that extended forecast. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's really neat. Yeah, Dang. yeah, so that's, yeah, that's been cool. a really nice feature within the app. Yeah, I mean, it literally, like right now, it's telling me it's 83, southwest wind, 5, mile, five miles an hour. The barometer is 29.92, and then your uh, sunrise and sunset feature. That's really cool. Yep, exactly. So... You know, we're working on getting some more weather stations in there, but uh, right now there's there's quite a few. There's a ton of them throughout the, the country in every state. That is cool. And now, I mean, and obviously um, you guys have different versions from the satellite view to the hybrid topo map. Um, any new details on that, Dylan, or is it kind of the same 
when we talked last year? You know, part of uh, part of the reason we were able to upgrade the offline maps and make those smaller sizes, we've done a lot of improvements to our base maps. That's the aerial imagery that you showed there. Um, you know, the the topographic data. So we kind of We've done a lot of back-end work on our end that's not super customer-facing. You know, it doesn't look or appear a whole lot different. Um, but, yeah, there's been a lot of updates and a lot of work going on on our end to be able to make it so we can save those areas at a quicker time and take less storage on your phone. But, uh, yeah, you definitely can switch between the aerial imagery, um, satellite images, um, and then that topo. Yeah, that's super quick. I mean, the minute you second you tap on it, it changes in – gives you those features, but it's it's really nice. Yeah. Really easy to use. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I know I had one more question for you, Dylan, and I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> so like in your account settings, stuff like that, I notice sometimes if you want to hit on that, sometimes I'll have a little um, icon that tells me like, hey, I got a message. So how often do you guys reach out to the members using the map and giving some of those updates too? Yeah, so what you're seeing there is if you have like a little icon um, and go to your account settings, you'll see an inbox. Basically what that inbox is, as you said, it's a good way for us to, you know, introduce features like the wind and weather. So when that came out, you know, we put that in there, put a notification because we do realize that it's there's a lot of information. And if you're just pulling up the app, if you're just using it during season and you might not have pulled it up for the last six months, you know, it's hard to know all of the new information and how to access it and which buttons are new and which ones to push, et cetera. So we just kind of use that as a content hub um, for releasing helpful information, scouting tips and tricks, um, and then also just some, some Onyx content there. So, um, yeah, that's what you're seeing with that inbox. Yeah, I mean, it's a super cool feature, and it's neat that you guys uh, put that out there and kind of keep us updated on what's going on and, and uh, some of your guys' content yourself. But uh, I think I want to say you guys don't, like, flood the inbox. It's, you know, a couple times a year. But when that information mm-hmm. comes out, it's definitely good info. And um, I've always been like, oh, man, I actually, it's like the only inbox. I'm like, oh, I appreciate the heads up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. We realize that it can be, um, you know, there's potential to have a lot of uh, communications and content there. So we try and limit it a little bit to the, the necessary stuff for the bigger pieces. Absolutely. Before uh, before we jump off, Dylan, tell everybody kind of basically how the plans work and how basically they go about choosing what plan is right for them. Yeah, so we have a free seven-day trial. Um, all people have to do is search for Onyx Hunt um, in their app store on their phone, download the app, and you'll get a free seven-day trial um, risk-free. And then after that, we've got um, a single state membership. So our premium membership will give you one state, whatever you choose, and then our elite membership will get you all 50. Um, the premium membership runs $29.99, uh, so 30 bucks for that, and then $100 for the elite membership, and that is a, a yearly membership there. So, um, you know, if you're just hunting your state, that premium membership will be perfect. If you are somebody who does some uh, out-of-state hunts and applies for tags and wants to do research year-round on all 50 states, uh, that elite membership is going to be the best route. Absolutely. And I, I'm the biggest advocate of this. And, and uh, I, I use it daily almost, just playing around. I just can't get enough of it. They're looking at my hunting ground, stuff like that. And uh, just over and over checking those layers, those boundaries. I can't speak enough, Dylan, how much I, I love it. And I think it's one of the most useful tools as a hunter that I have, like, in a backpack or anything else, it just happens to be on your phone. But it is one of the must-have things, and uh, I can't speak highly enough about it, and I encourage everybody to check it out. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, you know, to basically second you, and it's definitely not because I'm a Onyx employee. I've been a, been a customer far before I was an employee here, and it's uh, definitely changed the way that, that we hunt and all for the better. You know, we used to drive by pieces of public land all day, um, you know, out hunting in eastern Montana and had no idea that they were public. Uh, with this information, you know, now just going out, you're able to confidently go hunt new areas and know that you're legal, um, you're abiding by the laws, and, uh, you know, it's just it's changed the way that I, I personally hunt, and I can honestly say that I don't know if I could uh, go out and do it without it anymore. Yeah, for sure. I don't think I could 
either. It's uh, if if you don't have it, it is bizarre. That's all I got to say. It is such a great feature that it, it's a legit. And I don't say that about a lot of gear, but it is so must have. It's it's unbelievable. But um, as always, thanks, Dylan, and uh, everybody. You can find the Onyx Hunt Map in any of your app stores on any iOS or Android. Uh, anywhere else, Dylan, that I'm forgetting? Um, yeah, so that's definitely the best. We we also have our website, www.onxmaps.com, um, where Onyx Hunt on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you name it there. So um, lots of different ways to get out and contact us and let us know if anybody has any questions. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, Dylan, and uh, definitely can't wait to have you on again, and we'll talk about the new features, and, and hopefully I'll see you in January at uh, ATA. Awesome. Yes, uh, hopefully, and good luck this season. Yeah, you too, man. Good luck, Al Cotton, and thanks again. Awesome. Thank you.